the use of AI in filmmaking. In this video, we're gonna look at six ways that I actually use AI in my job that can help you become a better filmmaker. And one of them will literally save you hours of your life. As a commercial director, I've been using AI more and more in my process over the past two years. But honestly speaking, AI scares me a little. Things are moving so fast and it can be exhausting to keep up. So I thought I'd share with you six ways I already regularly use AI in various areas of my process to save me time, money, and allow me to do things I simply couldn't do before. We'll start with an obvious one. ChatGPT is a tool that has become my day-to-day. -day. Whether it's in my personal life or professional life, this program has replaced Google for me. It's a little unnerving how much personal information it knows about me, but it's incredibly useful. Professionally, this comes into play in a few different ways. You can, of course, use it as Google on steroids for researching. Often, I will use it to generate photorealistic imagery from scratch, as I have here for some snapshot cutaways as part of a recent project. You can even use it to give you ideas for narratives, scripts, or scenes. I mean, you can get it to write the whole thing, but it's normally either super cheesy or just not what I'm looking for. But it can be a great starting point. But one of the most helpful and time-saving places that I've found it useful for is actually in my editing process, which brings us on some of the AI features inside of Adobe's Premiere Pro. Now, most of what Premiere has in its editing arsenal, DaVinci has some form of it too, and vice versa. Why do I still use Premiere when so many have made the switch to DaVinci? That's a chat for another video. But the AI tools inside of Adobe software are impressive. There's a bunch of features driven by AI, but the ones I use most frequently are firstly, scene edit detection, when importing existing edits or old school footage. The generative extend tool on occasion when you need those few extra frames, which seems to come in particularly handy for editor Adam when he's working on short form cutdowns for this channel over on my Instagram. But the most useful AI driven tool has to be the auto transcribe feature. Simply looking for a specific line someone has said in an interview is super easy when searching for text, rather than having to listen through the whole thing, like I used to four years ago, if it was even that long ago. Or combining it with ChatGPT to save myself hours of manual cut down time. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take this recent talking head shoot as an example. The final deliverable needed to be under two minutes, but I had two interviews just shy of an hour each to make up this final two minutes. There are moments that I knew that we had to include, but aside from those specific one-liners, how on earth do you begin to decide amongst all this footage what's gonna make the final cut? This would normally take me way longer than the two hours worth of footage that there actually is to go through, as I have to view, select, trim, tighten view, select, trim, tighten, etc. Hacking away and making decisions as I decipher the unnecessaries and consider key points where I can lose any things that might be considered repetitions. What I'll do now is export that auto transcription as a .text file. Drop that .text file into ChatGPT. Give ChatGPT some background on what I'm after and ask it to give me something like some key quotes that highlight X, Y, and Z with time codes. Now, of course, it doesn't always get it 100% right but it cuts out so much back and forth fath time, and then I can refine it from there. One other seemingly obvious use of ChatGPT and Midjourney, two tools that I regularly bounce between, is storyboarding. I have touched on this in the past in this video, but more and more it's becoming the expectation that you, as the director, can use and work with these tools. This is a much bigger conversation than just this one video, but I don't love this new expectation. Because firstly, I'm not being compensated any more money for the additional time it takes me to do these storyboards in comparison to what my fees look like before. They're the same. Secondly, that time itself, it seems to be a hugely overlooked factor when it comes to anyone talking about anything to do with AI. Can't they just AI it? Maybe they can, yeah, but it still takes time to do. This awesome AI heavy ad from original source shower gel here in the UK still took a VFX artist four weeks of work to make. And thirdly, for me anyway, I still find it so much more time efficient and often end up getting a much better end result when I work with a traditional storyboard artist. For now, at least, humans are way easier and more intuitive to prompt than AI programs. However, AI is getting better and better. And that brings me on to the sponsor of today's video, LTX Studio. LTX Studio is a platform I've had in my bookmarks long before they reached out, 
And from the platforms I've seen and researched, it really feels like they are leading the way and bringing a lot of these developments into one unified place. They've got so much to offer that I'm probably gonna have to make another video on this platform alone. But in a nutshell, LTX Studio helps you to streamline pre-production. You can rapidly develop your concepts and visualize your ideas effectively. I've been using it on a recent job in an effort to avoid the painful prompting and head banging process that can be generating boards using ChatGPT or Midjourney. Two platforms I love, but are useless when you want to be specific and actually get the framing and angle that you're after, as well as the imagery. Let's look at a past example to see how this platform can help you storyboard with ease. And not only that, but help you create animatics. On this previous job, we couldn't afford a storyboard artist. So I've done a bunch of scribbles that aren't very good. I've used LTX Studio to level those up massively and you don't need to be able to draw. You can just literally write what you want. But drawing can definitely help with specificity. Being specific. A low angle close up POV shot. There's some classic AIing there, but that's a pretty good start. Now I can just go into the tools here and work on the camera angle. That is mad. That is so good. And I'm going to show you how you can generate one with an upload. This is one of those very simple sketches that I've done myself. And LTX's generation of my initial sketch is pretty good. No, that is too good. You can also record your own AI generated guide VO, edit clips, add music in the timeline editor, as well as download the project file if you want to tweak anything outside of the built in editor. And I've only chosen to create these images in a scribble style. You can do all of this either with your own image style references or with a whole bunch of built in presets. Thank you so much to LTX Studio for sponsoring today's video. Now, I know we've all seen 101 videos showing this use of AI, so I'm not officially listing it but Photoshop's generative fill deserves an honorable mention. I've been using Photoshop to extend scenes for years now, but their generative AI makes this so much quicker and more often than not, way more realistic than any job that I could do on my own. It was incredibly useful on a recent job to help me out of some binds in post when versioning for a bunch of 916 deliverables, as well as the classic 16x9 and 1x1 versions. Generative AI is still far from perfect, and it may take you more than a few generation attempts to get anywhere close to what you're actually after. But it's use cases like these that is the kind of AI infiltrating our industry that actually excites me. AI is not coming. It's already here. And if you're not using it somewhere already in your workflow, then you're missing a trick. But the thing about all these tools is they all cost money. Some cost a lot of money. I'm going to talk in dollars now because most of these are American companies. My Adobe subscription seems to go up yearly. It's currently around $75 a month. I pay $20 a month for ChatGPT, $30 a month for Midjourney, another $20 a month for limited use of Google's VO3, $28 a month for LTX Studio. And none of these are the full unlock everything plans. Those are substantially more expensive. And there are a lot of tools. It feels like there's almost a new program being launched every other day when I open social media. I want to be on top of these changes and using the best tool to get the best result. But there can't be a lot of people out there that can afford this. And I don't just mean financially, but the actual time that it takes in and amongst around working our existing careers to learn, research and try out all of these platforms. That said, platforms like LTX Studio are starting to create a more holistic, everything in one place approach, which will help more with consistency, cost, cohesion, and the time to learn it all. I think I'll definitely have to make a more in-depth video on that platform in the future because they do offer a lot. I'm conflicted. On the one side, I find a lot of this super exciting and very useful. In a time of smaller and shrinking budgets and more and more expected of us for less as filmmakers, commercial narrative or otherwise, it's amazing to be able to do things like this, this and this that are, although all technically possible via traditional methods, would not have been possible under the budget and time constraints that these jobs were under. On the other side, I feel like as a director and as an editor when I'm editing, I'm expected to do more to do it quicker, to do more quicker and with less, which can be exhausting. I don't like the idea of taking away existing roles where people might have made a living doing that particular task previously. Of course, that doesn't feel nice, but then again, it comes back to the money factor. And if we can't afford to do something, but there is another way to do it, 
and personally, I always want to try and make the best end product possible, then why wouldn't I do that? Hopefully, some of the AI uses I've shared with you today can help you do more for less and quicker too. Ease off some of the pressures that have been building in our industry over the past five or so years. I'm definitely going to talk more on this in the future. But if anyone watching has any more apps, platforms, tools or particular use cases that you think are unique, then please don't be a gatekeeper and at least let me know in the comments. I do really want to learn everything that there is to learn about this space in production. If you made it this far, then please give the video a like below. It really helps the channel to grow. You should watch this video next. And if you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe for more semi-helpful tips and interesting insider industry knowledge.